Welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host, Eugene Edwards, coming to you live from Los Angeles. Today we have a special guest that has been making some of the most cinematic music heard in years, and it bears a tremendous range of influences. And he's going to help us delve into how to cover a song. He will grace us with a couple of uh, covers and some of his own fantastic original music. Plus, as always, we will be announcing the winner of the Fender Play Gear giveaway, so stick around and see if you've won. First, though, please welcome my guest, Twin Shadow. Yo, oh, Twin. Yo. What's up? Hey. Uh, not much, man. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, look, it's, it's, it's White Strat Wednesday. <laughs> It's a new oh. national holiday there. <laughs> Listen, um, for those that, that aren't familiar with you, you are a multi-instrumentalist, a composer, a producer, singer, songwriter. Uh, there, you have even more credits than that to your name, but it's a, it's a short show. So uh, if you can, tell us uh, what you're playing today, what, what you got there in your hands. This is uh, um, an Olympic white Strat that uh, I got, um, I don't know, maybe six years ago. I think it's the professional series, maybe. It's American. <laughs> Um, and it's got a little custom clear pick guard that I put on there. Um, Couldn't help us notice it. I figured we were gonna we were gonna get questions about that. I figured, so I'm glad you covered that at the top. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> and um, can we hear? Can we hear it? Show off a yeah, little bit. Sure. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, today, as I mentioned, we're talking about covering songs, right? So the mere, f you know, uh, my producer said this uh, a couple of days ago and it kind of blew my mind, but it, it's true. The mere fact of learning a song means you're covering it. So if you're right. learning it and playing it based on your own particular skill set, that's the cover. So even if you might think about it, the level of cover song, covering music can play a vital part in your development. So, so you're here to uh, help us dig into that a little bit more today. As always, we're live, so if anybody has any questions, Eugene, for any episode, Eugene, I, I, I'm in the comments. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, you're breaking up. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no. Where do I pick up? From where do I pick up? Sorry, we were having a technical issue. I think it's on my end too. So, sorry for the, the delay and the drop out there. Um, we may have to. Ah, we'll, we'll just burrow through this. Um, yep. Yep. Hey everybody, uh, we're just working on a few tech issues here. Sorry about the tech problems, but uh, Eugene's going to be back in just a minute. I'm just going to step in briefly, so uh, pardon my excusion here. So, man, uh, we were pick I think you guys had just kicked off. You started talking about, um, we talked about your guitar and moving on to When's the Party Over by Billie Eilish. Is that correct? Yeah, I think, you, I think Eugene was trying to talk about um, covers and, and uh, just the... the uh, he's he's mentioned something cool, which was uh, when you go to learn any song, you're essentially doing a cover. Right. Um, I don't know the point he was trying to make exactly, but that that is a that's a good enough point. Awesome. Well, so let's get let's get let's get the whole thing kicked off with the song. You selected cool. uh, some of the songs from the Fender site to cover for us today, um, and they're pretty widely different tunes. So um, to help set up the conversation about covering songs, let's start off with Billie Eilish when the party's over. Cool. <laughs> I've learned to lose 
you can afford to I tore my shirt to stop you bleeding But nothing Like it like that, like it like that. Yeah, I could lie and say I like it like that, like it like that. Don't you know too much already? I'll only hurt. You, if you let me, call me friend, but keep me closer. Call me back, and I'll call you when the part is over. Quiet when I'm coming home. I'm on my own. I can lie and say I like it like that, like it like that. Yeah, I can lie and say I like it like that, like it like that. But nothing is better sometimes. Once we both said our goodbyes, let's just let it go. Let me let you go. Quiet when I'm coming home. I'm all. I can lie, say I like it like that, like it like that. Yeah, I could lie, say I like it like that, like it like that. Man, Thank that you. is so good. <laughs> uh, uh, that is so beautiful. Uh, and sorry for the technical difficulty at the top there. Dylan, thank you for taking over. We get by with a little help with our friends here on Fender uh, Play Live. Uh, twin, uh, let's talk about this. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> this song, that version let's of this it. song. What brought you to that song? Why this tune? Let me, let's go that way. You know, this is one of those songs... I feel like um, I genuinely feel like a song like this gets written <clears throat> going up the hitting those notes messed me up <laughs> um, a song like this gets written uh, it's it's rare uh, it, it's very once in a while every once in a while there's a song it's usually a ballad like this uh, you know calling it a ballad is I wish we had a better word for that at mm. this point but um a song like this comes around and it just like it's universal it kind of knocks any, everyone over and um her performance of it is just so what pop music needed at the time that it was released and um i kind of it was more so i kind of always liked to challenge myself if i'm gonna do a cover i want to learn something about my own voice and learn something about composition and learn something about songwriting and this i mean you can't really say that this song isn't a perfect song it's it's just one of those songs it's so austere it's so bare and open 
that uh, it's one of those songs where it's tempting to add a bunch of stuff, but then in your case, you kept it just as austere as the original, and yet your per- it's your personality in that. Um, and, and you have a very distinct vision in your original work, if I may say. Um, but you do often cover songs. In fact, uh, we were talking earlier, you did a whole series of covers where people submitted songs for you to cover, where you didn't choose them yourself, and, uh, which must have been an interesting challenge in and of itself, yes? For sure. Um, that, was, that was literally me tr- trying to challenge myself um, and to inspire myself again. Um, I had a friend, my friend Zach once, he used to be, he used to hound me about doing covers and I, I would always like be like, nah, man, I make, I write my own music. Mm -hmm. And it, and honestly, it wasn't until, uh, um, until I learned a ton of covers for a friend's wedding, actually, um, way before (laughs) Twin Shadow. It wasn't until then did I really feel like after I learned like 40 songs of other 40 great songs, Mm -hmm. did I really feel like I could be a songwriter and then all of a sudden it was like easy to write songs like it, it just came out well then, I'm glad you okay I'm sorry go ahead no no, no the, that's that's the point is just just like it's not just about singing someone else's song it's actually about learning it's about learning something learning how to do something that is a long tradition a beautiful tradition it's incredible that we write songs if you think about the weirdness <laughs> of the world <laughs> it's so weird that we take this and write songs, you know, and to keep that tradition alive means to learn uh, all the great things that have been done before we got here. Uh, well said. And we're going to talk about some famous covers in a minute. But first, uh, I'd like to hear another song. I'm sure everyone would. Now, uh, remember, everybody watching, the, the, the covers that, that, that Twin is doing uh, for us are songs that you can learn on Fender Play right now. Uh, so uh, you started with a Billie Eilish tune, obviously, but why not shift to uh, some uh, a different era, some 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 ska? It's a cover of a cover, actually. It's uh, the specials. Message to you, Rudy. Take it away, sir. <laughs> Well, this actually, this actually kind of goes to something I was, we we're going to talk about the mechanics of how do you go about learning a song? What do you learn first? Are you allowed to change things around? And then here we are. Clearly, we're, we're going to do a, a bit of a di- different tuning, I assume? Yeah, just I'm going to drop this very bottom note down to C, which oh. um, any Strat players know what a disaster is <laughs> for tuning. <laughs> and I forgot, I forgot that that has to, things have to be adjusted. Um, but and that's yeah. also part of guitar arranging too. You're going to spread out the octave field there by dropping down to that le- that low note. Exactly. There, I wanted to get. Well, we'll talk about it. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll do it, and then I'll I'll talk about why I chose to drop that down to C. Cool. Oh my goodness. Well, we gotta we gotta do better than that. Hold on. It's funny, changing the, you mentioned on the Billie Eilish tune how you didn't change the key as a challenge to see if you could sing it in that range. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, and and I, I always recommend to people, it's like, just grab a capo and sing it where it feels great. Mm-hmm. Um, but for, for me, I just really wanted to get that. This, <laughs> well, this, it's song, not think, fantastic. this song is a little bit, uh, you know, I do everything kind of out of necessity. This song is, I think, maybe a half step down from theirs. And it just mm-hmm. worked out that I could drop that down to C and play the chords that I want to play. Cool. Um, which I hope will. I'll there take you go. that for now. I'll take it. Rudy, I'm 
This is great because this is a song I've heard a lot by a lot of different people, and I've never heard it that way. <laughs> what jumps out to me are the major seventh voicings. Mm -hmm. You re you reharmonize the melody on the resolution uh, of of the title line. Um, how do you take a song that's so established and do that to it? Right. So I th I think I chose the Billie Eilish song and this song because they're so far apart from each other. Mm. And, you know, and my through line in my music is always to try to find some sort of melancholic emotion. Um, when you hear Rudy, you kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of like got this like insane carefreeness. Like, it's like first day of school energy and you all really don't want to be there, but you're so happy to be with your friends again, you know? Um, and, um, when you have a song like Rudy, I, the reason I really picked it was because it, it's to me it's an uncoverable song because the the like trombone, the trombone. part is so <laughs> sure. signature. It's like how would you do that? And so for me, like I've always liked, um, I feel like like John Lennon and like hold on, Yoko, Yoko, hold on, where he, d where he does all that. Yeah or whatever and I just kind of took the horn part and put it in there just enough so that it's like kind of recognizable mm -hmm. you know and um, and then just like I like that idea of having like the chords be really mellow or, and uh, it just kind of g gave me I just tried to approach it in a way where it's like maybe more melodic and sweet than kind of like the skank of ska or the kind of the kind of punkiness of that because I have to adjust it to what I have, which is just this, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what I got from it, if I'm real quickly, was uh, it sounded to me like uh, obviously because the song was originally written in the late 60s it was done by uh, uh, David Livingstone and it was actually kind of admonishing that ruffian rude boy culture. Um, and I kind of got that. It was like an older person saying, hey, chill, you know, and, and you might want to save it, you know, do something for yourself in life. And, and that melancholic tone uh, helped. And you didn't change the words. You just kind of gave them a new, a new context. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so we mentioned that you picked two songs from the Fender Play site, obviously. And what we may not know is that a good number of the songs on the site are covers, uh, Crossroads. Fever, House of the Rising Sun, uh, You Shook Me, Led Zeppelin, I Want Candy, Strawberry Letter Number 23. Uh, the list goes on. 
Yeah, right. Uh, Shuggy Otis, uh, so. masterful, masterful musician. Um, so, uh, and now we've, we've dug into covering songs of your own style, but you've got a great catalog of originals as well. Uh, so let's hear one of yours. Uh, and uh, when listening to your music, by the way, it's such a full experience in my opinion because it's so evocative. Uh, and like I said, it bears so many influences. Um, do you have a preference on which one you want to play right now? Uh, um, I might do a song called The One right now. Perfect. Beautiful. Great. We'll see if I can remember my lyrics because the <laughs> other ones I, I had lyrics out of it. <laughs> Oh, let me let me uh, give myself a little help here. Always a producer, aren't you? <laughs> always. always a producer. <laughs> I gotta be right. <laughs> here we go. I'm in love with your lovable. You're all in with the crew. Something's missing. There's something about you. I'm all eyes for the coldest star You would do the unthinkable For me I can't believe sometimes Twin Shadow, everybody, doing the one. What a great song. What an intense tune. Um, tell you what, I, 
I want to go, we have some great questions that have piled up here, man. So we're gonna try and knock oh. these out, all right? Um, James C wants to know, do you pick songs around your voice or do you make the song work for your voice? And you have a, you have a big range, a, a big vocal range. So this is a really great question. Yeah, that's a great question. I think that, um, I think it's really important when you, you pick a song, um, if you don't have a sense of, of uh, what is good for your voice, which can be really hard, you know, I've, I still find that I'm like, oh yeah, C major is really my key, you know, like <laughs> I, um, I, I sometimes it just, it just changes, but you want to try to, f I always, I always tell people like, put a capo on the neck and play the chord you know best. You know, if it's a G shape or whatever, and just sing the first note that comes to mind. And whatever that first note, is, whatever the strongest note that you feel the most resonant note in your body, I would center it around that, like pick that key to, to do it. In. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Because that because usually it's the, it's the most nat the most natural sound that your body can make to me is usually the most resonant. Um, and that's a good place to start. But for me, what I love, like on the Billy cover, I went as high as she goes on the third line, but then I went down the octave for the last mm -hmm. line. And usually I, usually I really don't love melody modification because huh. to me, melodies are, I like rhythmic modifications because that's more kind of human. But melody modifications is like changing the code to the lock. <laughs> you know it doesn't it doesn't work anymore if you change it too much you know um so i think um i think if you think if if you're if you have a deeper voice and you're trying to sing something higher try to challenge yourself first to sing it in their key and see where you where you get lost and yeah. see if see if coming down the octave on that line might give you something and for me on that billy other song it like it was like that line the line is like uh she says uh but no, nothing ever stops you leaving was the was the line where i went under and for me in my voice i felt like oh that kind of works like for me to go really high and then to say that really sad heavy line lower kind of worked i assumed you did it for dramatic effect when, when it happened <laughs> i didn't think it was so mechanical so perfect um here's a, here's a great great question this comes from i love this uh this screen handle here Kubrick Lover, 1972. I Want Candy by the Bow Wow Wows was a cover of a, a, of a song by a band called The Strange Love. So Kubrick Lover, 1972, would dig that. Uh, they want to know what's the most difficult song you ever uh, covered? I think um, in, when I was doing the Under the Cover series, mm -hmm. I did a Tori Amos song. Um, Silent All These Years. Silent All These Years. Yeah. And I mean, that was like... Uh, that is way out of my range. Uh, it's way, um, the lyrics are very heavy. Uh, the whole thing is, was very hard. And I, and I, I would, I wouldn't say that I succeeded in creating my own version of that song because, um, that's almost, almost impossible to do with that song. Cause it is so personal and so her, but, um, I did it as a challenge. And uh, it was hard, but um, got through it. It was just I a, thought it was a, a lot it was to a, learn. It was a t it was a brave call. It was a brave call. Yeah. Um, love to hear one more of your own songs before we let you go. How about we take some minutes to hear five seconds? It's cool. <laughs> I'll try to try to make sure this this strat really didn't. Is it like moving that. around on you? Yeah, it didn't really like that. Um, Maybe you can answer this. Actually, while you're tuning, can you, somebody? Uh, I think it was Nick Thompson wanted to know what's the signal chain. Uh, on your guitar right now okay um, so I am using um, guitar into a, a volume pedal which I'm not really using ah. much but I, I am using it a little bit but um, then I'm going into the uh, the fender bubbler chorus and then into the mirror image delay both of yeah those are by fender. good I love that mirror image pedal yeah it's great um, I I I'm obsessed with chorus, but I'm obsessed with using it as as light as I possibly can. To me, chorus has this beautiful um, wow in it, almost like a tape mm -hmm. uh, tape that is uh, kind of broken, and it mm -hmm. gives a guitar a, a little bit of a mo more of an emotional feeling. 
um, and takes it away from, you know, especially when you're playing guitar by itself, it takes it away from that country thing and Mm -hmm. puts it into a, uh, some people think chorus sounds cold, but I kind of think it's like this, uh, it's, uh, it's this bedroomy kind of space, Uh like a warmer Um, ethereal thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going into the Vibralux reverb amp with a little bit of a little bit of reverb in the vintage channel. Cool. And that's it. Cool. All right. I didn't mean to interrupt, but it was a question, so uh, that's cool. I'll hand, hand it back over to you. Seconds in your heart, straight to your heart, can't get to your heart. Five seconds in your heart, straight to your heart, can't get to your heart. to take back it's your fate can't lose anymore I'm strange look at your face I don't believe in you you don't believe in me so how could you how could you Make me cry Five seconds in your heart Straight to your heart Can't get to your heart Five seconds in your heart Sounds like this when it comes, we kiss. When it comes, it sounds like this when it comes, we kiss. I don't believe in you, you don't believe in me. So, how could you, how could you? Make me cry, make me cry Five seconds in your heart Straight to your eye Can't get to your heart Five seconds in your heart Nice arrangement. I still see you on a motorcycle with a stuffed dog <laughs> with a stuffed dog on the back. Um, one, uh, final I'm still, thought. I'm still doing that that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, one final thought here. What might you say to somebody who doesn't think that they have the skills to be able to cover a song? I think uh, you mentioned something just uh, as your technical difficulty happened. <laughs> you mentioned that learning a song is doing a cover essentially and i think that that is uh that's kind of it it's it's, um uh by nature of you um 
doing it, you are cover you are covering it, and you absolutely can do a cover. The other beautiful thing to know is that chords are really important. But again, it's like I, I and this might just be my belief. Melody to me is everything. Melody and and the hint of the rhythm, the rhythm that the melody is sung with, or if it's a, if it's an instrument, um, the the rhythm that it's played with. Um, the chords are to me. I don't mean to say that they're meaningless. Like chords, chords create the emotions around a melody, but they're the thing that you can play with the most. So I could sit here and do five seconds if I wanted, just going like that. Five seconds in your heart, straight to your heart, can't get to your heart. You know, and then it's just like, <laughs> then it was takes no on, chord. <laughs> it exactly. Yeah. It takes on completely new meaning because that one note has. Uh, it's just created a little relationship, mm -hmm. and I think if people realize like some of my favorite songs like like Prince songs that are some of my favorite songs have some of the most complex chord movement and his guitar playing is so, well, one of my favorite songs is sometimes it snows in April and mm -hmm. like I it took me years to figure out what, how he was playing that song um the the chord voicings because I just wasn't uh, um, I didn't know these kind of jazzier chord voicings it took me forever but I tried and tried and tried to cover that song and you know it, it it kind of needs those chord voicings, but but you'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. And you probably created some cool things along that path. You know, uh, thank you so much for weighing in on this topic. Obviously, you, you're a very thoughtful person uh, and a very creative person. So it was it's really valuable for us to to hear from from you on, on such a topic. Uh, for the players watching at home, we're going to assign some homework to help you on your path to doing a great cover. Uh, these are some simple things you can work on, but for more lessons and to learn some of the songs that you heard uh, Twin do early in this episode, make sure to check out Fender Play. The homework, I'll assign it, for the beginner, we want you to learn the intro to House of the Rising Sun. Okay, it's a, arpeggiated chords, get those down. For the intermediate, learn the riff to Led Zeppelin's Bring It On Home, which is cover of a Willie Dixon song. Uh, and for the advanced, we just want you to post yourself playing your favorite cover. Okay, and remember, it's an exhibition, not a competition, so no wagering. Uh, I think that it's time in the show where we bring out our old pal, Dylan Kalajuri, the, the curriculum guru for some exciting play updates. Welcome, Dylan. Guys, this show, I mean, wow. Do we it's, have the easiest job today on the planet or what? This was just like, thank you so much. I mean, it's like, you know, when something, when somebody plays and you're completely removed from all the nonsense that's going on up here and into the moment, <laughs> That's when something good just happened. So, you know, Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. thanks a lot. So, so Dylan, tell us what you're playing and let's hear it in action. Yeah. So basically, I mean, uh, what I'm playing through is one of the biggest things right now. I'm playing oh, through okay. the, uh, the GTX. Uh, this is the single 1250 watt model. And I set up a couple tones just to be able to talk a little bit about or to sort of expand on what Twin's talking about with um, doing covers and expansion and contraction of what's in the song and making it yours. And so... A couple of different ideas in terms of making things bigger or smaller uh, was this sort of telephoning idea. So, so like somebody might say, like, wow, that's just a really fuzzy, weird sounding thing. Kind of sounds like a telephone. And the idea is literally, uh, this happens a lot in mixing too, you want to take things and break them down to their most, uh, I think actually Twin, you talked about this when you when you were saying uh, people's natural singing, uh, mm -hmm. where they nat their range naturally was. You want to take them and break them down to their most organic or most um, innate elements. And so that's one of the cool things to do with guitar. Another uh, quick run through of, of a different idea. This is kind of like the edge type of thing, right? Where you're taking a... And using that repetition and you might have heard when he was playing one of the songs he was playing through the chords and he would do a stab and yeah. you would really only hear the delay on the stab right and i think as listeners if we can if we listen to stuff as we're going through the, our days you can hear these elements and you can hear what what producers and what musicians want you to hear more than once and so i'm um, taking a simple idea like this uh, <laughs> Just kind of developing that idea, you could try doing a cover over it. This one's called Bedroom Pop. It's on the GTX 40. Uh, one more here is a. 
another repeat idea. If you're having trouble switching chords too quickly over one of these songs, play one of them. Let the computer do it for it. No, just joking. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, last one, this is adding a room tone. So basically it's kind of sticking a, a reverb on here. This is called, uh, I called it room with a distortion instead of a view because because I'm a nerd. But a mer Merchant Ivory reference. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> basically the idea is to stick your guitar in a room, like putting the listener in a space. Hmm, so... <laughs> So you kind of get this idea of like, am I on the cliffs of dope? Probably not, because I'm not gonna no. play the rest of the song. But you get the idea. <laughs> I'm not in, I'm not in my room. I'm somewhere else, right? It's larger. So um, these are all ideas. When you guys are taking on your covers, I hope uh, some of the folks in the community can post some stuff of them playing covers or the tunes we talked about today. That'd be that, awesome. That, I think that'd be great. Yeah. I have to move on, or, or the producer's gonna kill me. Uh, so now, do you guys want to hear who won the Fender Play Live giveaway this yeah, week? I, I, yeah, I always do. Do we need a drum roll? Uh, well, we're almost there. I just I'm going to explain oh. it to anybody that might not know what what I'm talking about yet. So the yeah. Fender Play Live giveaway is basically <laughs> a weekly giveaway we do right here, and you automatically enter to to win when you get a streak using Fender Play. So a streak is three seven minute sessions using the program, and you can pick from guitars, basses, amps, ukuleles, stuff like that, right? And it's delivered right to your door every week. We announce it. Make sure you get three streaks, or excuse me, make sure you get several streaks so you get several chances to win so i can say your name and let's announce this week's winner are you guys ready give me, give me some kind of drum roll yes. john f john f well congratulations there john f way to go john enjoy your new guitar bass amp or whatever it is that you choose to have delivered straight to your porch dylan what else do you have for us buddy all right, so uh, one final thing that I want to talk about uh, that's new on the site is uh, we've got finger picking collections that are on there. So, uh, well, actually, right before you guys cut, you, um, you guys had talked about chords and how he was learning uh, the chords that were in the Prince songs. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Every time there's so many layers to a Prince song, you never know. It's, it's totally. like a Prince onion. But basically, uh, the, as you're going through, uh, there's a system called Caged, and we have a collection on Fender Play about the Cage system. The idea is that you you basically, well, first you tune your guitar. So is it? Soon you're gonna build it's out out of tune strat. When yes, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thank okay. you, Gene, to the rescue. Thank you. Uh, building out how to play single chords across the neck in multiple variations, and so that whole system. It sounds like. Uh, voodoo right now right well if you want to be able to break it down you want to go right to the source and fully understand that then check out the caged collection that we just put together and then have a look at the other collections there in there while you're at it check out what's new tab anytime you want to see what's new on the site by the way prince onion was my professional wrestling name for just a like a year oh, or two yeah. just wanted to know so i don't know if you, you meant to like refer to that yeah you got that okay well thank you very much dylan and uh, uh obviously a huge thank you to twin shadow uh, uh for stopping by performing some covers doing your original tunes uh, we're so, so grateful. And, and Dylan, thank Cheers. you again for, uh, for bailing me out of the technical glitch there. I was um, terrified. Yeah. Thank and, you, uh, And Twin, uh, tell us what you have coming up. So I've just finished a record. Um, I'm going to wait till the smoke clears of mm -hmm. the, uh, sure. the disasters of 2020 <laughs> um, uh, and hope that the next year is better. But um, uh, I've got a record coming. Um, and, uh, what I probably want to just shout out right now is, uh, um, maybe I should shout out, uh, a single that, uh, I played on called, uh, it's called Slave. Um, uh, I just want to make sure that I have the, uh, the right, um, label. I actually don't know. I don't know. Well, whatever. That people can look it up. It's a song called Slave, and it's uh, by Duval Timothy, who's an incredible artist who's doing kind of like uh, piano, um, uh, kind of, I don't even know. It, it's, it's like jazz, but it's, it's, it's very modern. It's very beautiful. Um, anyway, we did a song called Slave, and it's one of my favorite tracks, and it just came out about four weeks ago people should check check that out it's duval timothy slave it's on his new record we will check that out that's the most that's the up up to the minute update there on twin shadow thank you so much man uh, best of luck to you in the future uh, everybody out there thank you for hanging with us with those technical glitches i want you to keep safe keep practicing and we'll see you next time everybody out on a g chord one two three <laughs>